Disney Plus has just released the latest installment of Star Wars Visions on May the 4th. This would be the part where I would wish you a happy May the 4th, but knowing me and my work ethic, if you can even call it that, this video will be released months after May, so why bother? For the first season of Visions, LucasArts asked several Japanese animation studios to make stories based around the Star Wars universe. This time though, for season 2, LucasArts asked different animation studios around the world to give their take on Star Wars. So you have studios from Ireland and India making stories with that Star Wars spice. Season 1 of Visions boasted a lot of fresh and interesting ideas accompanied with fun characters and settings that should be revisited at a later date. There were only two or three episodes that I didn't really like, but the rest I thought were either really good or fun. For my review of the first season, I gave it pretty high praise for someone who doesn't like anime. So of course I was excited to hear Visions was getting a second season, but after watching all nine episodes, I was actually disappointed with what we got. The majority of the episodes weren't bad per se, a lot of them were pretty looking, but most of them weren't really that interesting character or story-wise. One thing that I love from the first season of Visions is that there were a lot of new concepts introduced to the episodes, like a Sith that hunts down other Sith, or lightsabers changing colors depending on who's wielding it. That alone made Visions memorable and gave it personality to the majority of the episodes. Visions Season 2 is sadly lacking that element of originality. A lot of times it felt like most of the studios were playing it safe by not introducing new ideas and sticking to themes like family and choice. Two core concepts in Star Wars, sure, but having individual studios tell the same story but changing some things back to back got boring really quickly for me. Just like my review of the first season of Visions, I'll go over each episode and give each one a rating. Give you my thoughts about the episode, you know, how reviews usually work, right? So let's get started with the first episode. Sith. A super colorful episode. You have this artist that's force sensitive that uses the force to paint, but she seems to struggle with the dark side whenever the blobs of paint turn black. Later on, we learn that she was once a Sith apprentice who fled from her master to seek a better life. Unfortunately for her, her master is on the hunt to reclaim his lost apprentice. Watching some of the scenes in this episode gave me some goosebumps with how beautiful the scenes were. Accompanied with a good soundtrack and a great animation style, visually this episode is spectacular. Everything else, on the other hand, not so much. The characters, while they look cool, weren't really interesting. Which I think the reason behind that is due to the plot of the episode. The concept of the episode was intriguing, but the execution was done poorly. For example, I would have loved for the writers to have delved deeper into the artist's struggle with the dark side tendencies. We got a surface level view of the struggle, but beyond that, we don't really get anything else. If they would have explored that theme some more, then not only would it make the main character strong, it would also make the ending more potent. Sith gets a 7 out of 10 for its amazing visuals and for its lackluster execution of the plot. Screechers Reach Man, I was excited for this one. The moment that they announced that Cartoon Saloon was in the new Visions lineup, I was instantly sold. Cartoon Saloon created some bangers like Wolf Walkers, The Breadwinner, Songs of the Sea, and The Secret of the Kells. So with Screechers Reach, I was fully expecting it to slap, but to my disappointment, it was mid. Cartoon Saloon dropped the ball this time around. Screechers Reach is about four kids who leave their job to go to a cave called Screechers Reach, where it's said that a ghost resides there. Firstly, I gotta say that I'm bummed out of how poorly this episode was animated. Poorly might be an exaggeration, but if you compare Cartoon Saloon's work on, say, Wolf Walkers to uh, their work on Screechers Reach, you can definitely see a difference. Its animation doesn't feel as fluid as it should be. While the frame rate of the episode was a bit jarring, at least Cartoon Saloon was able to make some pretty scenes in this episode. I didn't much care for the plot if I'm being honest with you. It has some high points, like the old Sith lady screaming her ass off, and the arrival of the other Sith Lord. One thing that really threw me off was the theme of choice, where the main character has to choose between staying with her friends or going with the Sith Lord. My perception of the Sith is that they wouldn't even consider giving someone a choice like that. It's either choose the right path, or I'll fucking kill all your friends, so the only path left to go to is the right path. But I guess not. 
One last criticism I have to give to this episode is something we've heard from the first season of Visions, which is the episodes don't feel like they're taking place in Star Wars. Screechers Reach, honestly, doesn't have that Star Wars vibe to it. If you remove the lightsaber and the speeders, then would you really know it was taking place in the Star Wars universe? I also thought the Sith ship looked too organic and not a ship you'd see flying around in Star Wars. Screechers Reach gets a 6 out of 10 for its nice visuals, but disappointing frame rate and semi-boring plot. I should be rating this episode harsher since I expected more from Cartoon Saloon, but I didn't dislike the episode altogether. It was fun at least. In the Stars their planet decimated and their people brought to the brink of extinction by the hands of the Empire, the two main characters, who are Force-sensitive, must move around to find scarce supplies, all while trying to evade detection by the Empire. I... I have mixed feelings about this episode. There were some things that I really liked, and there were some things I really didn't like. I really like that they used elements from other Star Wars projects, like the workers' outfits first introduced in Rebels. Thought that was a nice addition. I didn't quite understand why the studio decided to go with snow troopers instead of regular stormtroopers, but it was still nice to see them make an appearance again on screen. The portrayal of the Empire in this episode was really nice. The Empire comes to this planet rich of resources and starts taking the resources for themselves, which results in the planet being polluted. But the way the episode so goes about telling us about this just felt off. The way they said how the Empire was ruining their planet sounded like the writers just copied another story's writing with a similar story plot and just pasted it in their own story. I thought that was pretty lame, but at least it gets the point across. I really, really, really love the Imperial Officer. The design of her uniform was great, the scarf and trench coat really complemented the overall vibe of the character. The choice of voice actor was nice as well. I think she had a Scottish accent. Pretty sure. This planet resources belong to the Empire. Regardless, though, I thought she was very interesting, unlike the main protagonists. Now it's time to talk about the overall story. Hmm. Yeah, I wasn't really invested in either the story or the main characters. I thought the story was pretty bland. It's your typical run-of-the-mill plot where the Empire takes over a planet and depletes it of all of its resources. Nothing new or special happens to the entire runtime, so no surprise there that I wasn't going to be fascinated with the same thing we've gotten before, but done better. I'll tell you what though, I thought the little girl was annoying as fuck. Way too optimistic and naive, which gets both characters in trouble, mind you. There was one scene that got a little giggle out of me, where the older sister seemingly is successful in stealing some of the water and is about to leave. The alarms go off and then we see the little sister being detained by some workers. I said to myself, what a stupid bitch. Three seconds after I said that, the older sister said, can't make that shit up. Wasn't the biggest fan of the animation style that they used in this episode. It reminded me a lot of the old Christmas specials you'd see on ABC Family, but the only difference being the old Christmas shows were better animated than In the Stars. I'm giving In the Stars a 6 out of 10 for its callbacks to other Star Wars titles, but having a pretty bland story and annoying characters. I am your mother. I'm gonna be straight up with y'all. I was starting to get mad while watching the beginning of this episode. Something was rubbing me the wrong way. I wasn't seeing the obvious at first. I notably got really mad when they show off the little astromech droid that extended out like a slinky toy and got little dog ears to boot. I was like, what the fuck is this? Come on, man, get this shit off my screen. But in the very same scene, while the mother was fixing the droid, she turns to the camera with her wielding mask on, which was basically an exact replica of Din Djarin's helmet. I was about to get even more angry, but then it hit me. Oh, right, this is satire. Oh, okay, okay, I get it now. So after that revelation, I have to say that I really enjoyed the episode. The episode's plot revolves around a young Twi'lek pilot that's trying her best not to tell her mother about a family race event happening at her flight academy. Things, of course, don't go her way, so both of them end up going into the race. I didn't mention this at the beginning, but the studio that made I Am Your Mother is also the people that created Chicken Run and Wallace and Grummet. So with that being said, 
one could easily assume that this episode was going to be funny. There were a lot of instances between characters and gags that got me laughing for the majority of the time. The characters in this episode are really charming, which is so refreshing since a lot of the episodes so far bolstered some pretty mediocre, just straight up boring characters. I found the relationship between the mother and daughter was really lovely with their ups and downs throughout the plot. Family, a core concept in Star Wars that we've seen plenty of, but I Am Your Mother takes that established concept and makes an interesting and compelling story. The animation and story were both well made and fun to watch. Overall, a wonderful experience that I might have to watch again because it was just that funny. I'm giving I Am Your Mother an 8 out of 10. Journey to the Dark Head. Blech. Anime, my old nemesis. I thought we left on good terms in the last season of Visions, but then you had to come back with this shit. You have this monk chick who can see the future through rocks. Later on, she goes to the Jedi Council to seek help to destroy a statue that has dark side energy in the hopes to change the fate of the galaxy. Oh shit, where do I even start with this? I thought the dialogue was hot garbage. It felt like a 16 year old wrote up what he thought two people having a conversation would sound like and then called it his magnum opus. You really start to feel the dog water writing when the Jedi dude and the monk girl start talking with each other. Like there's no way the writers actually thought this is how real people talk, right? Infuriating! Then, you have the main villain. They fumbled this character super hard. It is fucking depressing. Design-wise, he looks dope as fuck. His introduction was pretty sick with his whip lightsaber thingy. Thought his voice suited the character very well, dialogue was good at the beginning. Then, for some ungodly reason, they fuck him up. How? They have him talk way too much, talking a lot of bullshit that got me sounding <laughs> And the worst offense is the fact that they had him remove his helmet for no fucking reason! He went from a menacing Sith Lord to some pasty white dude with long ass hair. Fuck man, the characters in general just dog shit. The saving quality, I guess, would have to be the first fight scenes? Maybe the plot? I like the concept of being able to see the future through rocks and having there be a little twist towards the climax, but honestly, this episode was just plain bad. There will be people who will think this episode more highly since they're more used to this kind of shit, which is fine, but I'm giving Journey to the Dark Head a 5 out of 10. The Spy Dancer I was not a fan of the design of the Stormtroopers in this episode. I thought they looked ugly and cheap. Already, I wasn't really impressed with the design and honestly, the story. You have this alien chick who dances around all while putting trackers on the stormtroopers. If that was the entire plot where maybe she gets caught, then I would say this episode gets a 5 or maybe a 6 out of 10. For it's really pretty animation, but boring ass plot and shitty stormtrooper design. But this episode hits us with a 1-2 combo that really makes this episode shine. That 1-2 combo being this character right here. The main dancer lady was gonna assassinate what she thought was an Imperial officer who took her child away from her. But when she went for the kill, she realized it wasn't the same officer as before. She put the entire operation at risk for this one moment that turned out to be a big mistake. That little bit of information about that character made the whole story more interesting to me. But the plot keeps getting better from there. I'll try not to get into spoilers, but the more that's revealed about this character, the more morbid the plot gets. I was sitting there at the end of the episode thinking, God damn, the Empire really do be fucked up for that. I thought the episode was amazing. Granted, we had a rough takeoff, but once things got into gear, I was able to see the Sky Dancer's true beauty and genius. The animation, the characters, the plot, all blending together to make one fantastic episode. I'm giving the Spy Dancer a 9 out of 10. The Bandits of Golak the first thing that caught me off guard about this episode was the animation. For a quick second, I thought the studio that produced this episode borrowed the software that animated the Clone Wars. On closer inspection, there were some differences to the point where I think it's not the same exact software, but it's definitely stylized to replicate the Clone Wars animation. You have two characters that are trying to get to refuge from the Empire via train. There are some hiccups, but they managed to get to the Sanctuary One Piece, but unfortunately, 
A dark, looming presence is closing in on them. I think the biggest highlight for me was the Inquisitor featured in this episode. Not only did he look cool, but he had a pretty threatening presence to him. Plus, he was accompanied with Purge Troopers, the good-looking ones. So that was a nice bonus. Once again, we get an annoying, dumbass child as the main protagonist. They're really testing my patience with these characters, I swear, I swear. A lot of problems appear because of her lack of awareness of the situation. The Empire is after all Force-sensitive people, so one would think the older brother would be more adamant in telling his little sister not to use the Force, right? I, I guess not. I guess not. That just slipped through his head, I guess. The relationship between the siblings was well explored. From watching this episode, you could easily pick up that they have a strong relationship. There were some good action scenes, like the speeder bike scenes and the fight with the Inquisitor. Really didn't like the studio adding a lot of slow-mo moments into the episode. I guess that's a Bollywood thing, but I don't really much care for it. Once again, we got a choice dilemma, which at this point, I'm getting super tired of seeing. Do you revert back to the dark side? Do you go with the scary lady? Do you go with the old lady? Again, I know it's a core concept of Star Wars, but Vision Season 2 really overdid it. But with Bandits of Golok, it felt more impactful than other entries. More specifically, it was more impactful than Screecher's Reach. I'm giving Bandits of Golak a 7 out of 10 for its fun action scenes, wonderful villain, the Clone Wars style animation, but annoying ass characters. The Pit. This episode was my least favorite out of the nine episodes of the season. Everything about this is so mind-numbingly boring that I had to really force myself to watch it. The plot is so simple that I could very much explain it to you in very few words and still get the point across. Empire has people dig a hole. Empire leaves people in hole. Rich people in nearby city comes in and saves them. This entire episode feels like the studio that produced this made the entire thing last minute. It is so pointless, so meaningless, that I was so disinterested in the story that when one of the main character dies, I was like, oh, okay, cool, I guess. The story lacked anything impactful that I was actually hoping the Empire would come back and fill the hole up to silence the people. Now that would have made the story 10 times more interesting. Or when the rich people were at the hole, have the Imperial troopers actually open fire on the citizens. Now that part really irritated me. The Empire would have 100% shot up the fucking crowd, but no, they just let the bastards pass by and then they fucked off. That entire part of the episode was so fucking stupid, I, I swear. I could could go more into detail, but trust me when I say The Pit is just a dog shit episode. I'm giving The Pit a 2 out of 10. Fuck this episode. For real. Ao's Song. We're finally at the last episode of the season. We have some ups and downs, but mostly flat lines. Yet here we are at last at Ao's Song. An episode that I will remember fondly throughout the years. The episode is beautiful. Truly a work of art brought to life. You have these tiger-looking species who mine corrupt kyber so the Jedi can purify the crystals. I just love the whole idea of an entire community dedicated to mining these corrupt kyber crystals, which will play a huge part into the plot later on. Remember how I said at the beginning of the overall review of Vision Season 2 that the first season did a lot new and interesting ideas? We finally get a piece of that in this episode. With how the main character interacts with the kyber crystals, the music playing along as she sings to them, it plays heavily into the idea that kyber crystals are alive. This concept isn't anything new in Star Wars, but how it's presented in this episode makes the concept refreshing and fun. Speaking of the main character, we finally have a main child protagonist who isn't fucking annoying. Yes, she gets into trouble and does stuff she was specifically told not to do, but the writers wrote it in such a way that you have empathy for Awu's curiosity. The animation in this episode is so beautifully presented. It has that stop-motion animation vibe to it, like in the stars, but done way better. I would honestly love to see this setting explored more in other Star Wars projects. Oh, and the music, god damn, it was so surreal. First time hearing the music work so well with what's happening on scene gave me goosebumps. A Star Wars title is only good as its soundtrack, and Au's song knocked it out of the park. I am confident in saying that this episode is a masterpiece. So much so, 
I will gladly give it a 10 out of 10. Gotta save the best for last, I guess. While it is sad that Vision Season 2 doesn't slap as hard as the first season, I still think there are some pretty nice entries. It's definitely something that I would recommend someone to watch if they got some time to kill. I just wish that these episodes did more in terms of writing and coming up with something new and innovative. Instead, what we got was the equivalent of a box of assorted chocolates. Majority of them aren't really good, but there are some chocolates that you'll have to fight grandma over. If Disney does decide to renew Visions for another season, I would love to see Gendy's Tarkadovsky's take on Star Wars, which we basically did from the 2003 Clone Wars miniseries. Anyways, that's all I have to say about Visions Season 2. If you agree or disagree with me, please let me know in the comments down below. I would love to see your rankings of the episodes. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you all in the next review. Goodbye, for now.